This is the most controversial BMW design since Chris Bangle. Well, well, what have we got here? It's a BMW M3 Competition G80. It's based on the 3 Series, but it's got 510 horsepower under the hood. Who's Chris Bangle? Back in the early and mid 2000s, Chris Bangle was BMW's lead designer. He gave us the BMW 5 Series E60 and the BMW 7 Series E65, which were known to be very very controversial design. With time, however, I think they aged very well. These are 20 year old cars. They don't look 20 year old to me, but at the time people thought they were hideous. This rear end was called the Bangle butt in a very demeaning way. Likewise, although not designed by Chris Bangle, this car, the G80, has brought us this. This front end, and specifically the grille, makes you unsure if it's for engine cooling or if it's actually going to go and nibble on the closest tree like a beaver. Now the normal 3 series does not have this grill yet, but the 4 series coupe does. I first drove a car with this front end, an M4 competition in 2021. At the time I thought it was just completely disgusting, but with time it's starting to grow on me. And so when it comes to this car's design, my thesis is that it's going to pull a bangle. This front end will age well. And actually, this car is going to be called beautiful in just a few years. But for now, it's just considered hideous. This car replaced the F80 M3, which was the previous generation. And it is a very different car. We'll talk about that when we get to the driving bit. But they added a lot more comfort to it. It is a lot more forgiving. And for some people, that may be a good thing. For some people, that may be a bad thing. What's most interesting about this car is what's under here. Not under the floorboards, but under the hood, I mean. This is BMW's new family of M engines. It's the S58, which is based on the B58, which is the best BMW engine in probably the past 20 or 30 years. It's a 3 liter inline 6, very traditional BMW engine, putting out 510 horsepower and in this case sending it to the rear wheels, but for the first time BMW has all wheel drive variants on the M3. This is not one of them. The thing is that this engine is absolutely bulletproof and incredibly reliable, which is not something that BMW has done in the past. The N55 and N54 engines that were so popular in the 2000s, they were not particularly reliable. These engines though, they are. By the way, this emblem is specific for the 2021 model year and it commemorates the 50 years of BMW M. But I have something very disappointing to say about this engine. It's a very reliable engine, as I said before, so it was very commonly used for tuning. You know, you would get stage one tune, stage two tune, and you could get them to a lot of power in their B58 variants. But with the S58, BMW did something that pissed off a few people. The ECU, the computer of this engine, is almost unbreakable. You see, the process that you have to go through is like jailbreaking an iPhone. You have to unlock the ECU, which is something that only very specific companies can do, and they probably will charge you like $1,000 just for that. And then finally, that's when you can take it to whatever tuner you like for a tune. But here's the interesting thing. If you take it to the BMW dealer and they plug in their diagnosis computer to your car, it will automatically detect that the ECU is jailbroken, it will get uploaded to the cloud, then whatever warranty claim you end up having, BMW will just tell you to very kindly go yourself. You kind of don't want that to happen. So what a lot of people are doing with these cars, and that's actually what the owner of this particular unit has done, is they do a gearbox tune. So this car has all the electronics and the same gearbox as the M3 CS, which is the most powerful variant of the M3. So that means faster gear changes, essentially. But the engine itself is bone stock. As I said before, 510 horsepower. By the way, this is a good time for you to like this video and subscribe to this channel. The gearbox that they're using now is no longer a dual clutch gearbox. BMW has shifted towards conventional torque converters again. 
That used to be a bad word in performance cars just 10 years ago. But now they've gotten so good that you no longer need a dual clutch gearbox to have blisteringly fast gear changes. And since they were relatively problematic, or at least more problematic than a normal torque converter gearbox, they decided to just leave that. And to be honest, I haven't heard a lot of people miss them. This is a ZF automatic, eight-speed, essentially the same automatic torque converter gearbox that AMG is using, BMW is using, everyone's using these eight-speed ZFs. They're really good, they're reliable. Most parts are interchangeable with other models, so repairing them is easy if something breaks down. Oh, and before you go complaining like, oh, I can't attune this car, these sucks. Well, let me tell you that 510 horsepower is not a small figure. I was accelerating this car on the highway. I was doing 100 kilometers an hour, that's 60 miles an hour. The speed limit is around 80 miles an hour here in Spain in the highway, 75 actually. And I floor the car and in like two seconds, just if I wanted to get a small sample of the engine sound, I was doing very illegal speeds and not like speeding a little kind of speeds, like going to prison speeds. It's not a car that lacks power. And if you really, really, really want to tune it, just wait until the warranty expires and you can get the ECU flashed and you can get whatever tune you want and no one will care about it. Hey man, if you blow the engine, then it's on you. Another interesting thing the owner of this car told me, by the way, the owner of this car is one of my closest friends. He's a very famous YouTuber here in Spain. Is that he's using these Yokohama semi-slicks as daily tires. He said he's actually been very pleasantly surprised with how they work even on the rain. Well, I wouldn't daily drive a car with semi-slicks, but he owns this car, he knows better than me. The rear end of these cars is not controversial at all. Every single person thinks it looks brutal, it looks amazing, and I fully agree with them. The quad exhausts, the carbon fiber everywhere, even the M3 competition badge. This car looks meaner from the back, than from the front. And I'm doing this shot before a BMW fan comes here and goes like, hey, if you're seeing the rear end, it means you're losing. So of course it's gotta be the meaner aspect of this car. Cause all those AMG and NRS drivers will lose against this M3. Sorry, man, that still doesn't excuse you from deciding a beaver front end. The wheels, some fantastic looking 19 inch, again, with the 50 year M logo, very cool looking very good for sporty driving, maybe not that good for potholes. Let's hop in. And now's when you're gonna say, Lucas, we cannot go anywhere, the hood's still up. Yes, we're not going anywhere, yet. But we are actually starting the car. We gotta wait until the car heats up. We can see there, we cannot exceed 3500 RPM. It says there, all power will be available soon. Now here's the thing. Why aren't we going anywhere? This is a driver's car. There are two things I have to talk about first. Number one is the equipment on this car because these M3s come fully loaded. And number two is that if you're actually buying these cars, the first thing you're gonna do is not drive away. But actually the first thing you're gonna do is start pressing buttons, because the amount of things you can configure on these cars is simply amazing. Before you set off anywhere, take some time, maybe like 12 to 18 hours to actually go through every single menu and you don't want to set off without engaging the perfect driving mode. Equipment, electric seats with memories, power folding mirrors, of course, blind spot detection, automatic headlights and automatic high beams. We'll talk about these little buttons in just one second. Cruise control, heated and ventilated seats, triple zone climate control, you've got climate control in the rear end as well. Active exhaust, you can quiet or make louder. As you can see there, the surround cameras, of course, there's nothing in the front because the hood is up. It's letting me know that. And if there were someone walking around, I would be able to see that. Once you're in drive, you've got this three line button. You can press it. You can see there on the dashboard, it starts moving. That changes how aggressive the gear shifts are. From one, very normal, to three, very aggressive. Slight reminder that you're driving an M3 competition. The seats themselves are bucket seats with the M3 imprint in there. They've got carbon fiber on the back, very cool bucket seats. Cool thing about the heated and ventilated seats is that they use the same button, so you press here and that opens the menu that chooses if you want heated or cool seats. You see then both 
are on at the same time. Just listen to the exhaust. Now these are personalized settings, M1 and M2, which you can leave configured so that when you press them, you go into exactly the mode that you want. So in this case, M1, you press, you actually have to press twice, goes into a sporty mode that my friend has configured. You're only driving with the pedal shifters, so it's fully quote unquote manual. You've got limited stability control, but some of it is still on. And it also leaves you with the most aggressive gear changes. Now M2 is even more brutal than that. Once I confirm, I have no traction control at all right now. None, zero. Once again, the gear changes are manual. This is the full around mode. No driving assists at all. But if you wanted, you could use these buttons to, I don't know, set up like eco mode. I've just closed the hood. Let's take it for a drive. So now we're driving this M3G80. And the first thing you'll notice is a brake squeak. There's just no getting around that squeak. If you want brakes that will work well on the track, you've got to deal with the squeak on the street. The only way to avoid it is braking really hard and making the brakes really hot, which you won't be able to do out here. That's actually one of the biggest complaints that luxury car dealers get when people buy their first performance car. They go like, why do my brakes squeak? And the dealer will tell them, well, that's normal. And the person will usually not take that as a valid response. Now I'll get this thing over with quickly. This car is comfortable. They really managed to do that in the G80. They did not manage to do that in the F80. This is a normal 3 Series that goes really fast. A normal, well-equipped 3 Series, that is. I've just set the transmission into its most aggressive mode. That's where this car really shines. They made a wonderful 3 Series that sounds like this and goes like what you've just seen. Of course, I cannot talk about whether this car is super aggressive or super sedate without actually taking it on a track. So since I'm not taking it on a track and the owner of this car is a guy who has unlimited hours on a track, we'll take his word for it and admit that this car is more sedate and more predictable and forgiving than the F80. But I will take it onto a slightly more twisty road so that we can really see what it feels like. And then this road we can enjoy the car a little bit more. Ah, oh, this car sounds fantastic. Watch out. Construction on road ahead. The interesting thing about the modern M3s is just the sheer amount of equipment that they have. These are fully loaded 3 series with a ton of power. So all in all this is a better faster, cooler car than the previous M3 F80. But it is a less engaging car, less raw car, less brutal, far more forgiving car. If you're looking for rawness, perhaps you should just get a used M3. But if you're looking for a faster car and a more comfortable car, well, this is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe for more content on this channel. See you next time.